Hello everyone. I want to make a video for us today. It's, I'm going to be in Exodus 3. I think I'm going 1 through 10. I might read a little bit more. But it's going to be in the King James Version of the Bible. And it says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert, even to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here, I, here am I. God didn't call him until he turned aside. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And God said, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and heard their cry by reason of their taskmakers, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up out of the land, of that land, unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me, and I have also seen the oppression which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now and see, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth people, my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. He said the Lord seen him. He, he sees everything. Uh, I made an audio of this uh, about four years ago or something like that, but I wanted to make a video of it. Uh, you know, don't complain that you got plucked out of the waters and taken to the palace if you weren't if you wasn't willing to float through what. Um, like Moses did in Dodge Alligators. Till you've suffered through what I've suffered through, floated through what I've floated through, survived what I've survived through, then you really don't know. And I really don't know about you. You know, when they have uh, like 9-11, uh, the enemy has chatter, but right before 9-11, the chatter increased. So right before the enemy attacks, many times there'll be an increase in chatter. Don't be distracted by that lose your focus because God pulled Moses out Moses was blessed but he was confused you can be blessed and still a little bit confused uh, he stuck he's neither Egyptian or Hebrew and he looks out the window and he sees two men fighting and there's the confusion adversity brings openings for opportunity when a critic takes the time to take a shot at you that signals that he must think you're important or feel threatened, and that raises the bar for you and lowers the bar for him. Moses see the Egyptian and the Hebrew fighting, and that is conflict to him because he's torn between his Hebrew heritage and his Egyptian present status. When, when you, what you see on the outside is a reflection of what's going on in the inside of a person, a frown, uh, maybe a like a frown or a smile or reflection on the outside, that's what's happening on the inside. That's why you frown. You got to change that. Everybody's happy, as I've said many times, but some just haven't notified their face yet. The reason some people are in conflict with you is that they're in conflict with themselves. The reason some folks don't like you is they really don't like themselves. Love thy neighbor as thyself. If you don't love yourself, it's hard to, to love that neighbor. Proverbs fifteen thirteen says, a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. So I don't want to have a sad countenance. If that's a reflection of what's going on inside of me, I don't want that. What do you see if, if that's a reflection of what's going on on the inside is what you see on the outside? Moses is trying to stop the conflict between the Egyptian and the Hebrew so he can stop that conflict that's going on inside himself. Am I Egyptian or am I Hebrew? 
do these Egyptian and this Hebrew fighting? Who do I owe my allegiance to? I mean, I, I'm a Hebrew, but I grew up as an Egyptian. And that conflict was going on all the while uh, inside of him. Faced with an Egyptian and a Hebrew fighting, he now has to choose which side are you on. He had had an internal conflict that's now it's went external. 40 years had not demanded that he make a choice, but this one incident forced him off the fence. He's got an internal problem that's went external. When you try to debate a shallow person, you, you, you just say, it's all right, it's all good. Don't even worry about it, just chill. It don't matter. Uh, don't debate shallow people, silly people. Greatness does not come forth when you're given the position. It comes before. You, you were rich before you got the money. You were educated before you got the degree. You're a preacher before you're called one. Uh, you have to escape on a level of displacement. You, you have to operate on a level of displacement because you have the vision, but you're not the leader yet. You have, we have the vision before we have the position. And if we're not careful, that's going to create frustration. Because you feel that way on the inside, but there's nothing or no one to acknowledge or reinforce you on the outside. You don't feel appreciated because your ability's up here. Uh, and and your, your recognition's down here. You don't know that you're important enough to be despised on that level. Your opposition of me has tutored me to help me understand my own significance. God is bringing greatness out of Moses, which doesn't even have a position to match his intellect. He's, he's tending sheep for Jethro. We try to fix people, and, and, and we have problems ourselves, and you wonder, can the physician be sick? Am I, we're, we're trying to make a difference and we're running out of time. I see that in these videos. Have you ever tried to help people that don't even like you or appreciate the help that you're trying to give them? I'm sure we all have. I can definitely raise my hand on that one. Uh, you've never been hurt till you're hurt by somebody you're trying to help. I wish I could, uh, that some of you out there understood. I'm sure you do. Moses was tending his father-in-law's flock and God was bringing greatness out of a man that didn't have a position to match his ability and wisdom. Your situation doesn't match your thought and vision. You know, I've said this before, but Jesus was the greatest leader. But when I look and think about leadership, I think about Moses. Uh, he did a lot of things right. He did some things wrong. He struck the rock. So I have learned from Moses' success and Moses' failures. The very people you're trying to help is giving you the most grief you've ever had in all of your life. You've never been hurt till you've been hurt by someone you're trying to help. Have you ever been misunderstood? And the more you tried to help, the more those people fought you and things got worse and worse instead of better. Have you ever been where there seemed like there was a new battle every 24 hours? You just about get afraid to answer the phone, go to the door, afraid of what you might have to face. Lord, if one more thing happens, I don't know what I'll do. Uh, you met with fighting on the outside, fighting on the inside at the job, opposition at the church. Uh, it, it wasn't my enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. It was my, my acquaintance, my equal or whatever. You know how that goes. And Moses killed the Egyptian and buried him in the sand. He tries to break up a fight between two Hebrews, and they resent him and say, who made you a ruler and a prince or a judge? And maybe people still say that about you when God's already called you and sent you and you deliver the word of God. Who do you think you are? Ain't you the guy that used to be sitting on the piano bench back on Burns Avenue? You can be anointed, but not appointed. David was anointed, but had to go back out and tend to sheep. One of the great tests of greatness is your ability 
to survive frustration. You know, wheat and dust, you could set a grain of wheat. I could set it, this is a shelf. I could set wheat on there. And there's, I'm sure there's a little dust on there at times. And it would be hard to see which one's wheat, wheat which. The wheat has potential. The dust doesn't have any potential. God will put greatness in isolation, which will cause frustration. Because you have to be able to survive frustration in order to be eligible to be a leader. If you can't handle frustration, you can't, internal frustration, you can't handle external frustration. You st have to learn to be frustrated and still be faithful and consistent and diligent. Your prophecy is in the mouth of, the, of your critics. You can learn so much from your naysayer and the chatter uh, like, like terrorists have. You have no idea you're important enough to be attacked on that level. Their, their uh, opposition tutors you to understand your own significance that you might not have realized otherwise. The, uh, the enemy will always send you a t terrorist threat alert when you're close to your destiny. He will always defy you and say, if you go any further or get any closer, I'm going to attack you. The next test is to be able to function under threat. It's like I've told the example about the White House. If I'm out just looking at the White House, nothing's going to happen. If I start advancing, then that voice is going to come and say, tell me to stay where I'm at. You can look at the work of God and nothing's going to happen to you. But once you start getting closer, the terrorist threats is going to come out. You know, you're under threat, but that fire is still in there. Uh, you, you, you know that it might be trouble if you speak, but you can't forbear. You have to. Life will hurt you bad in the, if you let it. Take in what you can, can get out, let go of what you can't use, but whatever you do, don't, don't stop working. Everything's good with Moses and his father-in-law, but then he runs into that burning bush. You remember that burning bush? Moses, uh, there's background noise. The enemy's heard about you and he's after you. When Moses got to Midian, the Midianites think he's an Egyptian, so he enters into their rank as an Egyptian and they feed him as one. His conflict has gone away, has not gone away, and neither has ours. The question is, can you manage your conflict and still seize your destiny? Because if you're waiting for the conflict to end, you'll never get anywhere. Anytime you fail at something, there's a period you try to talk yourself out of ever wanting it again. It hurts. Uh, anytime there's great pain, God puts great desire in you so your mission won't end. If desire does not outweigh the pain, then the, then the earth would not be inhabited. Jeremiah 29, 20, 9 through 10 says, I, then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak in, any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. For I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side, report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my halting saying, peradventure he would be enticed and we shall prevail against him and we shall take our revenge on him. Anytime there's great pain, God puts great desire so your mission won't die. Moses tried to fit in at the, at the, at the Pharaoh's house, um, but he never fit in. Everything's good with Moses in Midian, but he runs in this burning bush, which is the return of passion. God will send a burning bush to you and what we see on the outside of a person is what's going on in the inside. They, I told you before, they got a, a plant in the wilderness, a bush that's oily, and it'll catch fire. Moses had seen that before, but what he hadn't seen was one that caught fire and didn't burn up. And he's 80 years old before he sees all that. I'm still on fire. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, you're under attack, but I'm still on fire. I'm still burning. I've been criticized, but I'm still burning. I still desire it. I have a vision. What do you do with a fire that just won't go away? Don't let the chatter stop you. Don't let the naysayers stop you. People are going to talk as long as they've got lips. Don't ever let someone's negative opinion about you become your reality. I am that I am means I'm too big to define or, or confine. I'm too great to be explained. God will destroy the enemy that's trying to destroy you. God is bigger than the storms in your lives, your weakness, what you think, what you've been through, your enemies, bigger than your childhood and all that happened. Uh, I think this is a great lesson. Um, I said on another uh, video that when you hear the hounds barking, you know you must be near the treasure. When all this uh, negative talk starts increasing, you know you must be getting pretty close because they're trying to discourage you. So uh, I've enjoyed this. I think somebody needs this, and I hope if, that, that this, if you do, this is what you will fulfill that need. And so until we get back together again, may God bless you is my prayer.